Hi everyone. Um, today I'll talk about uh, the motif analysis. So um, just a uh, memory um, briefly um, mentioned about the what is the motif uh, of the slides upload. So motif basically the sequence motif is a part of nucleotide, so amino acid sequence. So you can see um, this example, you can see that for different sequences, there's a short like sequence very similar across multiple sequence. And the pattern actually are very similar and for different uh, each base, the probability of one base is always um, higher than the others. So consider this is uh, like a pattern. Um, this is a why this so consider this pattern um, is very important um, because sometimes um, for transient factor or different uh, uh, protein bonding events uh, re recognize to the spe a special pattern of this sequence on the genome. Some uh, sequence pattern is preferable by certain kind of transient factors. So based on that, uh, from the sequence pattern, in somehow we can infer whether one transient factor can be bound for this position. Um, so that is very, uh, why the motif analysis is very important. Um, I think they especially have a, a region, and for this region, you can, a uh, genomic region can get a sequence you have the sequence, uh, then you can get the motif content. From this motif content, you can infer whether some transient factor can bound in this region. So that is important, very important in epigen uh, epigenetics study. However, one thing I should mention is that you have a um, highly, uh, you have a high chance to bond in this low side based on the motif analysis does not necessarily mean the transient factor will be bound to this low side. In addition to that, I think the chip seq uh, data is still necessary to confirm the transient factor is bound to this position by uh, like peak calling. If we see the enrichment uh, for a certain positions, and, and we also see the motif is also enriched in that position, we can confirm, use both information, we can confirm it is actually uh, trans this transfer factor can bond the can bond to that position. Only for motif analysis does not does not guarantee it is a position that could be bound for uh, this transfer factor. Also, because of this uh, cell type of specificity, a uh, tissue specificity of transfer factor, um, it's the increase of heterogeneity for this uh, um, chip seq data analysis or for the epigenomic data analysis um, because one trend factor can uh, bond uh, entirely different for different position if with the uh, biological context changes from one cell type to another cell type however you, if you based on the sequence to do this kind of analysis you can only for the motif analysis you can only get the fixed certain positions um, that could be potentially bonded by this uh, transient factor. So I think uh, um, motif analysis is complementary to chip seq analysis, um, but uh, uh, you cannot uh, rely only on motif uh, analysis for your um, data analysis. And for motif representation can be represented in a matrix form. You only have the alignment matrix or uh, frequent matrix. I think an element matrix is say, like, for example, you have a, a motif of high five, a base pair, you have a, a four base. You can count how many times it happens for each base. And also you can do some kind of normalization to uh, uh, normalize into a, a frequent base. For each column, you can summarize into one. Um, and uh, you can do some kind of visualization to say what is the probability of one base. Uh, and compare with these others. And from this pattern, you can see, um, can capture this motif pattern because it can allow some variation um, of the uh, each base, uh, uh, for each position of the base. Another thing is like, uh, um, this is actually can tell you how to derive a motif pattern. So a motif pattern actually can be derived from multiple sequences. Uh, you already get from the promoter regions uh, of the genes, uh, or certain uh, or certain regions they are interested, uh, most likely to be bound by uh, one transient factor they are interested to study. So if we get those sequence, uh, 
you can derive those patterns, calculate how many times um, it ha can ha uh, for each base can happen in each position. You can summarize into uh, an element matrix, a framework matrix, and or even um, weighted matrix. So you can have this matrix can represent uh, the motif patterns. So that is can tell you this is actually called the de novo motif anal analysis. And um, uh, there are two questions in motif analysis, no motif mapping. So this motif will actually be pre-calculated based on uh, experimental, based on uh, high uh, large data integration. So you only find occurrence of motif in nucleotide or amino uh, acid sequence. The second one is the de novo motif discovery based on the certain kind of sequence. You can de novo um, some new uh, motif pattern that could be occur um, besides the already known motif patterns uh, discovered by uh, other studies. And uh, actually there's some, uh, for no motif mapping, it can use the consensus sequence mapping, or you can use the um, so matrix uh, we previously mentioned, it is a position weighted matrix or position frequency matrix uh, to mapping to certain type, of, certain type of position, or even across the whole genome. There's two uh, useful tools. Uh, um, one is called the CISER genome, uh, divided by Hopkins. Another is the HOMO divided by UCSD. In today's lecture, I focus on the HOMO um, to discuss how can you use this tool um, for motif analysis. For the normal motif discovery, there are uh, many have two methods. One is called the word enumeration, and the second is called the matrix updating. So the first one is more like empirical based, they just count uh, what is the frequency of one motif pattern can happen. For the second type is more uh, like a statistic approach. Um, it have a like initial like initial like matrix of uh, position weighted matrix. You can update the, the matrix by incorporate more sequence. So, um, but this is uh, like two uh, major class of methods. Um, so um, where are we can looking for the no motif for so the one database I want to mention is Jasper database. So you can go to the website to explore the Jasper database here. Uh, this is for Jasper database. You can have the um, core motif for six different taxonomic groups. For us, I think mo most people study for vertebrate, so we can click for the vertebrate. Um, for most breed, I think you can see, okay, have a different species, have a mouse, have a human, and uh, for different uh, um, motif. I think this is for the motif ID. Uh, this is for the, which is the motif belong to the like uh, motif family. And this is a logo for this motif. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm interested in say, um, make motif, we can tap the search. So I make max um, for uh, human sapiens. And uh, so this is for the make motif. So I, I can just, just click the motif, uh, make motif here. So we can see that for this make motif, we have, um, we have uh, this is 10 base pair. For 10 base pair, this is the frequency uh, position, uh, frequency matrix for the um, a make motif. You can download this motif. Um, and uh, for different analysis, for just per for transfect, for murmur, and the raw PFM in different format for your follow, follow up uh, motif enrichment analysis. And this is local, is for each base calculator, what is the frequency uh, for each base pair. And uh, I think Jasper is a uh, um, very important tool as a tool looking for the no motif. But however, one limitation for that you cannot do for de novo motif analysis, especially have some regions that you are interested to study. Uh, I think uh, uh, you probably stick to other limitation tools for you to do this kind of de novo analysis. And the one tool today I want to mention is called the Homer. I think I most frequently use this tool. Um, I think it's very um, useful for beginners for motif analysis or for intermediate level uh, analysis. For other more complicated motif analysis tool, you can stick to TomTom. 
or murmur. I think they, they are both very more comprehensive motiva, motive analysis tools. And in today's lecture, uh, I'll focus on this uh, homework. I think the homework is a collection of tools that can commonly needed for analysis of gene expression profiling and the whole wide location analysis experiment. So such as the ChIP-seq experiment, the DNAS experiment. And uh, um, in most cases, um, homework, you can uh, give a region to homework and homework can scan um, the norm for more, no motive analysis and even if for de novo motive analysis. And you can download by, uh, go to this uh, web link, you can download from a software and do some, uh, and you can do some installation or follow instructions. And one thing I should mention is that um, this is not a web server, so this is a command line to us. Um, so that is the, you probably need some uh, programming experience for Unix based programming experience um, before you want to use Homer. But I think um, the tutorial is also, also very clear. You can follow instructions. I think you can, um, even if for biologists, I think it, it can be very easy to use. Uh, from my experience, um, uh, many of my collaborators, uh, they are postdocs and PhD students uh, from, bio uh, from biology ground, uh, uh, background. They can also use uh, homework for their own analysis um, very easily. Okay, so um, this is uh, for uh, two main purposes for homework. One is for low motive discovery. Uh, I think this is uh, mostly important because usually uh, we want to say whether this is region I provided is in originally some motif compared with this other. However, in the other case, um, people are also interested in de novo motif discovery. And uh, for de novo motif discovery, you usually have a target sequence of interest data or certain set of background sequence. So they have a um, enrichment for the target sequence and also enrichment for the background sequence. So they do some kind of comparison to justify whether this is the motif pattern is really de novo or not. If this is the motif pattern is already enriched in background sequence, but also have similar level enrichment in your target sequence, we don't think this is a de novo motif. We want to say this is a no motif pattern is more enriched in target sequence compared with the background sequence. That is, uh, if we get this kind of pattern, we call this is a de novo motif. For no motif we discover usually for homework or other uh, motif or software already have a collection or bunch of no motif uh, from databases such as uh, Jasper, uh, Transfact. Uh, Jasper is the kind of public free, so you can get a motif for uh, also, no motive very easily, but for transfect, uh, I think right now it's the charger uh, if you want to get a motive. But uh, I think this is uh, a um, good resource for Jasper. So, okay, let's go to um, go back to Homer again. So, the first uh, functionality for Homer is called a gene based analysis by providing this function called find the motive for uh, WPL. So this is the function where analysis to promote our genes and look for motifs that are enriched near target gene promoters are relative to other promoters. Um, that is said that uh, we can upload a gene list. So this is very similar to David. So basically I upload a gene list with certain kind of gene ID. Uh, it could be um, reference gene ID, it could be uh, official gene symbol and uh, this is a function we have to automatically get the promoter regions. I think it's a plus one KB and a minus one KB of TSS region. It extracts that region and do the motif scan for that region. And then report um, the enrichment of each known motif for, for that region and give you a rank. And so the input is the, uh, it could be faster, faster files, it could be gene identifies or from uh, certain genomic positions. The faster files could be the gene sequence, gene identify could be reference gene identify, could be gene symbol, or the genomic position for this gene. The output file could be the de novo motifs or could be no motifs. And uh, this is uh, um, the command line for us to uh, use the uh, homework. I think this is, uh, um, let's go to, uh, 
the terminal I used to run the homework to see uh, what is it each line uh, actually means. So if you type this command line to tell you that uh, what uh, genomes and the promoter are actually available for homework and what organs are available for homework. So we can see that it collects a lot of organs from human, from cow, from dog, so on and so forth. So this is not only for a uh, human and mouse study, but if you're interested in other animal models, you can also do this kind of uh, motif analysis. And uh, you can build up a different genomes like HG19, and M9, and it's for fly, uh, so on and so forth, so rice. So I think it's very uh, comprehensive database. You can download that. Okay, for example, I want to download a uh, human promoter. Um, because right now I want to, in this example, I want to um, use a human promoter as uh, the background. So basically I can just uh, type this command line to install the human promoter. Or if we want to install other genomes or species, uh, you can just uh, type the install or maybe uh, others, uh, H19 or whatever, so you can just uh, automatically run. It takes about like one minute or two, so it's very fast and very convenient. So after that, you can uh, run this command line, find motif. This is the genes you are interested. In. Uh, you want to see because it's a human genes. You want to specify this is human. And for this genist and in this human promoter, you want to find whether certain kind of motif is uh, um, enriched or not. I think for the genist, uh, I type I just uh, type separate genes. Um, like uh, a type of three uh, human genes and run this analysis. It took about between two minutes to five minutes. It's not that bad, um, but I didn't, uh, uh, but it takes some time. I pre-computed this and received the results into find the motif results. So you can go to this folder and you can output a lot of things. But uh, I think the most important information here, you need to see is uh, known results. This is the really most information you want to say. Uh, I want to see how many lines of the known results. So the known results tell you that um, for 441 human um, like motif, known motif, what is the enrichment? And uh, so we can see that for this information. Okay, we can see this motif. Yeah, this is the motif name for Fox K2. Uh, this is the consensus sequence for this motif. You get a p-value, you get a q-value, a log p-value, q-value, and lumbo sequence with the motif and the lumbo background. So based on this output, you can see uh, for the genes that you provided, what kind of motif uh, and the corresponding transfer factor could be more rich um, in this. Um, uh, promoter region of the genes that you provided. And uh, you can have this the Q value as a cutoff uh, to get the top rank uh, motif. So we can infer what kind of transfer factor can be bound in the uh, promoter region of the gene. So that is actually a very useful tool for you to do um, this is kind of uh, epigenetics analysis. Okay, so this is like uh, for the first uh, function module we uh, talk about is gene-based analysis. The second uh, um, module we uh, talk about is the region-based analysis. So sometimes we're interested in certain kind of region. It's not necessary to be the gene region or promote the region of the gene. We want to see the enhanced region or maybe we see, want to interest uh, see some intergenetic region. So in that case, uh, this is a very um, important uh, function for us to use. It can find in enriched motifs in any arbitrary genomic regions. So the input is very simple. Basically, it's just a file containing genomic coordinates with the chromosome ID, start and end region, and the position. So output is again, is uh, like the normal motif and the normal motif. So um, we go back again and see how this uh, how this works. Okay, this is the uh, find motif for uh, this is find motif for results. So basically, here I just uh, provide uh, a peak region. So the peak region I provided is okay. I just provide uh, have two 
like peak region here. And uh, in re reality, however, maybe hundreds of tens of uh, thousands and the tens of thousands of regions you can provide it. Uh, I just uh, uh, manually to uh, type a certain random region to show how this program runs. So the input basically is just a, a certain peak region. And uh, if we run this program, we can get the outputs. So I save the outputs into um, find the motif for results by Again, you can see a lot of things that jump out. Uh, you can see uh, some information like uh, other um, password information, KTG information. But I want to point out relevant to motif analysis. Again, this is long results. This is uh, what you want to pursue. And again, we can see some um, top in reach um, transition factor along with the p value and the q value. You can rank all these motifs and see whether some motifs are in reach in this region or not. Okay, the third function I want to point out is find the motif across the whole genome. So um, sometimes uh, uh, we want to say, um, because uh, we have 3.6 billion for human, we want to say uh, whether in some um, positions, whether certain motif can have some hits. So that in that case, this function are very useful called the scan motif for genome Y. So basically, you can take one motif or take multiple motif files or take uh, all the known motif files to scan across the whole genome. It can, it can tell you across the genome wide whether some position have this motif hit. So that is, I think that is very um, important function if we want to have the global picture of, of this motif hits the genome wide and do some infer of the transmission factor bounding no side. Or you can do some like uh, co-bonding analysis between different transient factor. You can see some whether some motif hits have some kind of overlap. Uh, this is very uh, important function. So in terms of that, the input could be a motif phi or a phi contingent uh, and a phi contingent make coordinates. And the output is the mapped low side for each motif. And uh, for the single motif for max, uh, you can, for example, interest the max motif for you can use this command nine. And one thing I want to point out is like for Homer, if we install the Homer, it can, if we go to the data folder, uh, you have a separate folder like uh, genome, go, uh, known TFs and promoters. So this is a backhand database for Homer. You can use this for the motif analysis. And if we go to known motif, Uh, you can see um, many different kind of like different photo and like no motif. So this is uh, um, all the all motifs. So here we use like this is uh, all motifs. Or you can use this no motifs. So all motifs is can I think it contains some the normal motifs, but this is no motifs. As this is um, most like from Jasper, and it, this is kind of reported motifs. You can either use all of them to do this like genome-wide analysis. Or you may be probably interested, just uh, interested in one motif or multiple motif instead of all the motif to save some computational time. So in case of that, you can go to the motif folder and you can find out all the different kind of motif you're interested. So here I'm interested in max so i just use this max motif i'm not say what is the uh, continuous in the max motif actually i found that this is uh, each row this is actg base this is for different position for the max so this is a uh, um position weighted uh, matrix for the max uh, to represent for the max motif so after that you can do this kind of a uh, scan um so back to the photo, I just run this motif will have some kind of uh, for HG19 whole genome. You might probably want to change your gene, bu uh, gene builder uh, if you want to interest, uh, interest in HG38. Uh, but uh, um, so after that, you have kind of output in the output uh, dot by file. You can type the output by file. And again, we can see this, uh, we have this max hits uh, for different position. 
and how many cases we have for, for the whole genome. And we have a lot of cases. And for, for this sequence pattern, we have like one, probably one million hits. So that is a lot. One reason is like multiple because uh, max motif is a very, uh, uh, I think it's a very short motif, so we have a multiple hits. And uh, the second reason tells us you cannot rely on motif scan only to tell you uh, whether the certain transcription factor, like a mass factor, can be bounding to certain loci because this is only sequence information, but the data, you need more biological context like a tissue specificity, cell nine specificity to tell you where exactly the protein is bounded. So that is why, besides the motif analysis, we still need the chip seq data analysis, uh, chip seq data to confirm uh, where the, the protein is actually bounding to certain kind of population. And also you can do this all the motif analysis by running this command line. So in that case, not only for max, you can have other transient factor, all the archives um, be merged into one beta files. So in that case, for one file, you can see across all the non motif, like 400 or 500 motifs, all the archives uh, position across all the whole genome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, at this point, uh, we talk about Homer, we have uh, three functionalities. The first is uh, uh, gene-based, so we, we can upload a uh, genist, and uh, Homer can do the motif analysis for the promoter region of the genist. And uh, the second functionality for region-based, so we have a certain kind of chip-seq technist or any region you are interested, you can upload it to um, uh, Homer and can Homer can do the motif enrichment analysis. The third one I think is called whole genome scan for all the known motifs. So you can pick up the motif interested for analysis or you can use all the known motif to do the whole genome scan to have a genome-wide global picture motif hits for certain uh, known motifs. Um, I think besides the Homer, uh, other popular, uh, very popular motif scan tools, uh, I know is Murmur, which is very popular tools, uh, have many uh, functionalities. So for experienced users, I would recommend the Murmur because this is a web server, have more parameters uh, to um, play with to serve your goal. And uh, uh, the third, second uh, tool I mentioned is the Sys, uh, Sys Genome. Uh, this is also provide a certain type of a motif analysis. Uh, I think uh, both tools are very popular and uh, along with Homer are very popular in epigenomic study. I thank you everyone. I think that is for today motif analysis and hope you uh, enjoy this lecture.